Welcome back guys. In today's video, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to make your own finger press brake that fits inside your shop press for a reasonable price. And the best part is, is that there's no welding required. Now I've made all of the drawings and CAD models available if you check out the link in the description below. Otherwise, let's get started. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take a quick look at the CAD design and right away you can see that things look pretty simple. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom out on this, show you guys an exploded view of the entire assembly. And you can see that it is only made up of a few parts, many of which are off the shelf parts that you can find online or at your hardware store. And the rest, which are custom, are made from easy to find stock materials. So these can be found at your local metal store. So we have some square tube, some round tube, and we have some flat plate, all of which do not require any complex machining. A lot of this stuff is just straight holes that are drilled through these components. So let's take a look at some of these individual components and see what's required to put this thing together. All right, so we're gonna be starting with this finger brake adapter for our vise. And this one here is four inches. I've seen them come in four, five, six, and eight inches. I got mine from Princess Auto in Canada. For you American guys, you can probably find the same ones at Harbor Freight or even go on eBay and find them. They're like 20, 25 bucks a piece. Now I have two four inches and a five inch and combined that makes 13 inches. So that's the distance between the uprights on my press. Now you can see my little press in the background. It's a 10 ton press, so it's quite small. But for those of you with a 12 ton or a 20 ton press, just measure the distance between those uprights and you'll have to find some combination of these things that makes um, either equal to or less than the distance between your uprights. So at this point, if you're wondering why we don't just use these adapters as is, well, I think the most obvious thing, of course, is the length. These ones are four inches, but even if you had the full eight inch length, you can't bend metal much longer than eight inches. And so that limits you. The second thing is that once it's in the vise, I'm just using a piece of cardboard here, but you can see that there are things in the way underneath. So if you wanna bend long flanges, not having an open side on the backside, is gonna limit you to the length of the flanges that you can bend. And then of course, the last thing is the size of the fingers. So these fingers are very short, and what this does is limit you in terms of, um, say you have uh, adjacent bends. So you have bends like on a wall, if you're trying to bend up like a box, then once you remove these fingers, those bends are actually gonna to start to hit the dies here, and you're not gonna be able to bend up flanges on a box, so these short fingers limit you too. So overall, this is great for bending little tiny flanges, anything that'll fit within the confines of your vise, but otherwise we need something with more flexibility and more functionality. Okay, so the next thing we have to look at is the base of our press brake, and it obviously has to fit within our actual hydraulic press, and in my case, I cut my bottom plate, which is a quarter inch thick, to 18 and a half inches long by three and a half inches wide. So you'll see that it fits pretty snug within my actual press brake, but there's enough room that when I need to actually take this thing out, I can with relative ease just slide it out the side. So with the finger press brake back out of the hydraulic press, you can see the bottom plate that I was just telling you about. So that's the quarter inch thick plate down here. And on top of that, I have a square tube bar right here. And this is a one inch by one inch square tube bar and it's got an eighth inch wall thickness. So it's the same length as the flat plate on the bottom. So it's about 18 and a half inches long. And at the ends here, it has two five eighths inch holes drilled into it. And that's to locate the five eighths inch rods, the two of them that you see there with the springs around them. So they run right through the square tube and they just sit flat on top of the flat plate. And these again are the guide bars, which guide that top bar up and down when bending your sheet metal. So looking at the bottom of our plate, you can see that there are two fasteners here. I'm using metric fasteners. You guys can use whatever you want. Mine are M8 bolts, and that gave me enough wall thickness in my guide rods here, which are 5 8 inch in diameter. But anyways, they're basically just bolted into the bottom of the guide bars. So I had to center drill those, and there'll be a little bit more on that later. But basically they just go into the bottom of the guide rods and the guide rods go through that square tubing that I was just showing you. So that basically just sandwiches everything together and holds those guide rods in place. 
and perpendicular to this plate. And that's very important so that your top bar will be able to slide freely and be able to return to the top with the force of the springs. So taking a look at our CAD model again, um, one thing I wanna try and make clear here is that these holes that I was just telling you about are not perfectly centered on our plate. So before you jump the gun and drill those holes, let me show you why. So looking at a cross section, you'll see here that the die, um, we want this to line up with the center of our plate. So basically the middle plane of our die should line up with the middle plane of our plate. And it's not important where the holes fall because I'm using, as I mentioned before, a one inch by one inch square tube. And so the dimensions just work out such that, again, we want the center of our die to line up with the center of our plate. So our holes might be a little bit offset. And the whole reason for that is that we want our hydraulic ram to be centered over our fingers. So when pushing everything down, all of the forces fall in the center and you don't get really like any sort of off axis or off plane force causing your finger brake die to want to um, rotate. So it's important, again, that your measurements uh, work out so that the center of your die falls in the center of your mounting plate. For the guide rods, I used 5 8 inch solid rod, as I mentioned earlier. And when I first started this project out, I used a half inch rod and that worked well, but I moved up to 5 8 of an inch. I had room inside my tubes and it just felt a little more stout, so I went with that. And you can obviously have to adjust your holes in your bars accordingly. So for a half inch rod, I mean, it should be at least a half an inch, five eighths, you're gonna have to go bigger. The guide rods are nine and a half inches long. And that was enough to accommodate the dies in the top and the bottom and the longer fingers that I was telling you guys about earlier as well. So of course, you're gonna have to account for whatever size fingers you're using. If you're using really short stubby fingers, you could probably cut this rod down to maybe four or five inches long and that'll do. And these rods are center drilled in the end for M8 holes. And as I mentioned earlier, you don't have to go metric. Clearly you can use whatever thread you want, but you're gonna need holes in the top and the bottom. And so the bottom is going to bolt this whole thing together, as I mentioned, and sandwich everything. So the rods are perpendicular to your plate. And at the top, because this thing's spring loaded, I have at the top, I'll move the camera up a little bit, and you can see here that I have M8 fasteners up here with washers, and that's holding this top bar in. There's spring tension on there, and it's basically keeping the top bar from coming off out the top. So the center drilled holes in the ends of the rod are a little bit tricky to do, and if you guys don't have a lathe or don't have access to a lathe, I came up with a creative method of doing this that get the holes more or less right on center, and you gotta make a little tool costs about 20 bucks. But if you guys are interested in seeing that, you'll see a card pop up in the top corner of the screen. You can follow that to my video or check out my channel and see how I came up with this little tool. And it'll make this a little bit easier for you guys and you don't have to invest in anything like a lathe. So moving on, we have the top bar here and this is the same as the bottom. So it's just one inch by one inch by an eighth inch wall thickness and that's square tube. And this holds the fingers in place and it slides over the guide rods. And this bar here has two holes in the end. And as I mentioned, I'm using 5 8 inch rod. So the holes have to be at least larger than 5 8, five eighths of an inch. And I would recommend going maybe a 32nd of an inch oversized. If you go size on size, clearly it's not gonna slide. Oversizing the holes too much will give a bit of a sloppy fit. So if you have a, you know, a drill bit or something that's a 32nd bigger, That'll probably give you a nice fit, or if you're lucky enough to have some adjustable hand reamers, you can drill 5 8 inch holes and ream out the holes to give you a perfect sliding fit. Alternatively, you can drill these holes out even larger if you have room in your tube, and you can use something like a bushing, and that's actually what I did. So I have plastic bushings in there, and it's hard to see right now because the bar is actually installed, but if you check out the drawings that I made available in the description below, You'll notice in the exploded view of this whole assembly, there are plastic bushings in here and they're flanged plastic bushings. You don't have to use plastic. Of course, you can use whatever you want. You can find yourself some bronze bushings or just go with no bushings at all. It'll probably still slide well enough with steel on steel, just with enough clearance. So looking a little closer at the entire assembly as a whole, you may have noticed on the top bar and on the bottom bar, 
that there's a, these additional holes here and they run straight through um, the front face and the back face of both tubes. And the purpose of these is that if you take a look at the dies that I'm using, the bottom die here, they're all, both bottom and top dies, they're both magnetic. And so they clip on and the top magnets are actually strong enough to hold themselves up without falling down. However, through operation of this thing up and down, any sort of misalignment might cause these dies to skew a little bit. So they have the freedom to still move around. They have these uh, little flanges on the front, both top and bottom. So what I decided to do was basically just drill, um, these are again metric, so six millimeter holes, but you guys can probably find something close, like a number 10. And the holes basically just line up with the dies. And I'm gonna be putting um, six millimeter screws through these bars, and that'll hold the dies in place and keep them from moving around. Last but not least, we have the springs, and these provide the return force to raise the fingers back up and release our material after bending. These are five inch long springs, so I've actually stacked two of them together. The ID of the springs is just slightly bigger than five eighths of an inch, so they slide nicely over top of the guide bar. And I found these on McMaster Car for a few bucks each. So before we go on to test this thing, I wanna tell you guys a little bit more about the fingers. And you can see the fingers that I'm using are considerably longer than the ones that come with the brake adapter. And the reason for doing this is so that you can bend up a box if you only are using these very short fingers. By the time you squish everything down, the clearance between your top and bottom is gonna be minimal and you won't be able to bend walls. And so those side walls will interfere with the bars and interfere with your mounts. So by having longer fingers, um, these ones are four and three quarters inch long. You can probably bend up just about three and a half inches of flanges that will clear these fingers. So you can bend something like a box. Now, the, they have to be the same thickness because they obviously have to fit in these mounts. So they're a quarter inch thick. And you can see that I have one here. So on the bottom, basically they just come to a point and it's two chamfers on the end and you get more or less a 90 degree uh, point on the end. It might actually be a little less than 90 degrees to account for some of the spring back in the material when you actually crush it. But if you are able to do this yourself, you could probably get away with maybe somehow doing this with a grinder and setting it up in a fixture. I had a drawing of these sent out to a machine shop to be made and they only charged me a few bucks a piece. So it was actually really cheap to do. The drawing's in the link in the description below. So. Like I said, you can snag that drawing and send it off to your local machine shop who would probably be happy to make these for you. Okay guys, so with everything assembled, it's time to test this thing out. I have some 18 gauge stainless steel put inside the finger press brake and it's not very thick, but it's a good place to start. So let's see what happens. Looks like it's bending up quite nice. I'm gonna keep going here. As soon as you start to feel some resistance, you're gonna be pretty close to that 90 degrees. And I'd say we're right about there. I'm gonna release the pressure and the finger press brake should return with the springs. And let's take our piece out. And that looks pretty good. Nice tight radius on that, 90 degrees. So I just wanna show you guys one more test here. This time I am bending up a box. I'm on the very last bend and this is where the fingers really come in handy. These longer fingers will allow me to clear the side walls and we should be able to bend up the last wall of this box. So there you go. So right now our minimum flange length is limited mostly because of the distance between the peaks on these V-shaped dies. So if we take a quick measurement between the two, you'll see that it is about three quarters of an inch. And if we divide that in half, that gives us three eighths of an inch. And that will be just about the minimum flange length that we can bend. So in order to reduce that, we need to somehow reduce the distance between the two peaks on our V-shaped die. And to do that, we can simply introduce 
two plates and they're held in place with some other square tubing, nuts and bolts and that sort of thing. But effectively what we've done is we've reduced the distance between our peaks and these plates are also supported on top of our V-shaped die. I have some dummy sheet metal in here just to show you what's going on. And if I drag the fingers down from the press brake, you can see that it should bend this to about 90 degrees, maybe a little bit farther. But the point is, is that we can get a smaller flange length now. And we can't go too small because of course, if you go too small, the fingers won't fit in between. Um, I know it's pointed, but you'll only be able to go down so far and you may not be able to get a full 90 degree bend. So again, there's still some limitations here. And you may want to try and chamfer these corners if you make or introduce plates like this to this finger break die. And the reason for that is having the sharp corners might scratch or damage your material and having some small chamfers in there might help with how the material slides and you won't get any scratches on your metal. And if I change the view and get rid of the cross section, you'll see the full assembly. And so these two plates, they're also just a quarter inch thick. They're held into place with, as I mentioned, nuts and bolts. You'll see some long socket heads going through the square tubing here. And so they're held in vertically. This bolt's holding everything in horizontally. That's optional. Um, I don't know if I need it at this point. Maybe if you're trying to bend something heavier gauge and these plates try and pull apart, these bolts will come in handy. Otherwise, I probably won't use them at the start. And with light gauge stuff, uh, this should be fine. Of course, all the plans for these optional plates are included with the rest of the drawings, and you'll find those in the link in the description. All right, so now let's take a quick look at how well this modification works. I have the plates installed in my finger press brake. I have my workpiece set up, and we're gonna be bending a quarter inch flange. So this would have been impossible with the original V dies. And there you go, you see a nice tight bend there and perfect 90 degrees. And you can see the other three flanges that I bent up earlier. That's it for this build. I hope some of you guys found this useful and I hope some of you guys decide to build one of these for yourself. It's a fun project that'll only set you back just over $100. Now, don't forget to check out the links in the description below. They'll send you to the CAD files and the drawings for this thing. And if you guys have any suggestions on how to improve on this design, please be sure to put them in the comment section below. Thanks for watching.